So there's been a lot of talk lately about the Leashy tools, right? The two-in-one picks, they are without a doubt incredibly cool and they are able to absolutely devastate even advanced locks. This is not a particularly advanced lock, but still, I like the fact, and Lockpicking Lawyers started to talk about in a recent video, just how valuable they can be as a teaching tool so you can understand what's happening inside the locks when you are actually manipulating the pins. But I wanted to go a little bit further. I wanted to talk in greater detail about why the tools work the way they do and what kind of information you can get out of the lock while you're using them. First things first, and this is really important to note, they are often available in different styles and varieties, right? So here we have SC1 and SC4. What does that mean? Well, for those of you who know key blanks, the SC1 is a five position key, right? You have five different bidding positions in this Schlage system. The SC4 blank, that is one of the blanks in Schlage land that has six bidding positions. What's the meaning for you when you want to use this tool in a lock? Simply put, it has to go in all the way. Now before we insert this, I will mention manipulating the picking arm, the two-in-one arm, whenever you're doing that sort of thing, you want to make sure that you bottom out the arm down at the nine depth before you move it in between chambers or before you insert the entire tool into the lock. You don't wanna crash into anything. Now, if we try to insert this in the lock, let's see what we get. Looks, looks not too bad, right? This is almost all the way up to the collar, but it's not quite there. You can almost see there's a very small gap right up near where the shoulder of, if this were a key, would be hitting the front face of the lock. This is typical if you try to insert the six pin version of the tool in what is, you can discover, a five pin lock. Sometimes it goes all the way, sometimes it doesn't. But in this instance, since we know this is a five pin lock and a little bit of a compact one in there, let's bottom out the tool and put it all the way into this lock. And look from the side as we do, you should be able to see that is completely flush with the front face now. That is a very good thing. So as far as using this tool, right, I really like the fact, and I've been enjoying people talking about how you can get new kinds of feedback out of the lock that you wouldn't conventionally see. So when you hear experts and educators talk about feeling your way through a lock and what your feedback is, the reason LPL and others really love this tool is because it perfectly illustrates for you all different kinds of feedback in the lock. Let's, let's try this. Let's put a little bit of turning pressure, right? We're gonna put a little bit of turning pressure on this arm. And you know what, even before I do that, I want you to just see, this is what we teach in class, right? Before you add any tension, any binding pressure, just feel the pins, feel how they are. And you can, you can literally witness that here, look at this. In this first position, if I bounce this, it wants to, if I'm not jammed up here, it'll bounce all the way back. It'll bounce all the way, the pin will push. You know, you can lift the pin, and it springs all the way back up, almost kicking it to a nine, right? Let's move all the way to the second chamber here, all the way down, try the second chamber, what do we got? Look, see that springiness? Going all the way back, boing, boing, all the way to nine. This is a completely loose pin, right? All of these pins in all of these chambers spring all the same way. A little sticky in the back there, we might not be perfectly aligned to the back of the lock, but there we go. There we go. All of them want to spring back to the deepest step. They want to push the pins all the way down so that they're at a nine depth and this arm kicks up. Well, the moment that we put a little bit of turning pressure on this lock, let's see what happens to our tool. The first chamber, has it really changed its behavior much? Not entirely. This is interesting though. You see, we're hitting something it doesn't want to push all the way to one. What we might actually be doing, it's not resetting back. It is it's still springing around. We might actually be finding the depth. We're just not clicking into that position. And if I push a little harder, now, ooh, we've got something different. See, we still have a springiness here. Hmm, quite interesting to me indeed. And I'm working on a weird, a weird angle here. So I'm gonna to try to not fight gravity. I'm leaned over but I'm gonna keep moving. Remember, we bottom out, move to the next chamber. What do we feel in this chamber? Well, I'm hitting something, but notice the it springs back almost all the way, in fact, does all the way to nine. So whatever I'm hitting in there, 
I think I'm lifting pins and we're actually cracking the, the top of the key pin possibly against the uh, plug wall without actually setting anything. We're finding what might be a real depth. We might be hitting a real depth. What is that coming to? About a five perhaps there. We're just not staying at that depth. It's kicking all the way back. We'll revisit that. Let's try the next one. Oh, now we're barely getting any movement at all here. That might be a pretty good bind. Let's compare that to what we feel in the next position. Look at this, lots of movement, and it wants to spring all the way back again. And the deepest position, ooh, all right, now I feel something kind of binding here. Now, this is what I want you to see. Right now, this is at what position? We would call this, it's picked to maybe five or even four. I think that's closer to four. But I can push a little more, right? I can push a little more at almost almost one, up one and a half positions of depth. I can push past the three up into almost the two range, but it wants to spring back to four, to four, to four. That's really important. And LPL, he showed me this once. I actually made an animation for him because he wanted to convey this concept to some people he was talking to. When you have a pin stack that is set properly, there's still a little bit of play. You're actually kicking the key pin just a little bit into the driver pin, but you're not knocking it out of position. It's still set, but you're still feeling that springiness. That's different than a position where the entire stack is just locked and doesn't want to move at all. All right, so we're, we're kind of happy with this right here. A little bit of springiness. Now we can kind of push in between the four, almost down to the two, barely, kind of in the middle. I would, I would say this is pretty close to maybe a three cut, even though there's, there's a bounce here, right? Let's see what we get in the next position here. Now, look at that. I can definitely feel, see if I, I'm binding, I'm definitely binding, because now if I push it down to there, it doesn't want to bounce, it doesn't want to bounce, right? If I push it just a hair further, again, it's loose, totally dead, there's no spring pressure there. I am fighting a binding pin stack, and I can keep trying, keep trying, ah, I got a good click. And now, what do we got? We got that little bounce action again. This one, almost in between three and two. I would say with that little bit of extra bounce pressure, I can touch the two depth right there. Kind of kicks me back a little bit. I like that. Next position, what do we got? Ooh, very stiff. I can push a little, I can push a little. You can see there's no bounciness until click. What do I just got? I got something I like. Looks like I can push down I'm kind of in between, we might call that six, six to four. I can push between the six and the four a little bit. I like that a lot. About one to one and a half, maybe even two positions of bounce is something you will find when you have that set condition. How about the, the second chamber? We're working our way towards the front of the lock. Oh, I got a nice little click there. And again, what do we got here? If I push it a little hard, I can get down to about the five and it bounces up to almost the seven. Good bounce right there. That is a set pin. And the front face of the lock. Again, this, there's no bounce at all here. We're just dragging, we're dragging. And then, ooh, I think I like something here. I can push it down and I can hit a four depth and it springs back to almost five and a half or six. That is a good set. So we think we've got some good clicks. It's not turned yet though. What do we do? Well, just like LPL would, start again. What do we got here? I like this chamber. That feels set. What do we, oh, there, that was it. Just a little bit of a tap as I went. That got her. So we're turned, we are picked. And now, fully picked, we could decode this lock right in this position here. Let's do that. So the very first position, now there's no bounce at all. We just let it drop, right? What is it dropped on? It's dropped on a dashed line that if we were to trace it all the way back, that looks like a four. Kind of, in, sometimes if it's ever halfway in between two positions, you can give the needle just a little bit of encouragement. You don't wanna bend it, right? You don't wanna, uh, but just a little encouragement. If you're in between two positions, I would consider that a four, not a five. Another reason that's a good thing, if you're cutting a copy of a key, and you're like, ah, oh, it's a little bit off. You could still cut that a little deeper to five, but I'd start, I'd call that first position a four. What about this second chamber? Kind of let it drop down here. 
Again, that's kind of in between a five and a six. So I'd give it just the tiniest bit of encouragement with, I'm not jamming on it, I'm just resting my finger on it to take up any slack or slop. I think that's a five, not a six. The middle chamber, what do we got? Let's drop it down again. Well, that to me looks like it's on the dashed line. Those are even lines, and that is a four. Fourth position. What do we got? Oh, a really deep drop. Definitely landing on another dashed line. That to me is lined up with a two. And this fifth position, right? The deepest position. Oh, another pretty deep one here. What do we got here? Kind of in between. It's kind of in between the three and the four, right? So what do I do? I just give a little bit of a tap. I personally like three myself. So what did we say that was? I've already freaking, it was three. I think it was four, five, and four. Then there was a deep one in this next chamber. What do we say? It was a, not a deep one. It was a deep drop because that was actually a shallow cut. We think that's a two. So four, five, four, two, and then we liked three, right? Well, I do happen to have the actual key that operates this lock. Uh, we could I, could, I could pause it right there. You could photo decode or and go ahead and take out the devious decoder card and we can see what kind of measurements we get. In the first chamber, what did we get? We've got a four. The next chamber, what do we get? We've got a five. I'm, you can't really see here, can you? The next chamber, it's a little tight, but it doesn't want to go past four. Oh, the next chamber is really tight. What do we got here? It stops at the two, and then the, na the last chamber is on three. All right. I think, unless I can't do the maths correctly, the card and the key and the leashy tool all tell us that this is a four, five, four, two, three. Now the decoding is cool, obviously, that's why we like these products, but I love what LPL mentioned in his recent video. I love the visualization, the difference between bounce, 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 a little bit of binding pressure, now, no bounce, no bounce, no bounce until you get something good. And then bounce, 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 bounce. That is what he and others, uh, we've, we've tried to convey over the years, what the difference between a set pin and a not yet set but on the way pin, how they feel different than a completely loose pin. So by all means, uh, I obviously, you can tell I'm a big fan of the Lishi products. Uh, it was funny on the day that he did his first video about this, you know, Covert Instruments sold out inst instantly. Uh, Red Team Tools sold out on almost all of them. Uh, we are back in stock now, I'm proud to say. Well, we carry these as well. I'm pretty sure I was talking to Barrett Brockage and Damon and the guys there at lockpicks.com. I think they liquidated a bunch of their product as well because all it takes is a, is a good YouTube video and things start moving. But I, I didn't, this is not a sales video. This is me just loving the degree of visual understanding that is possible with a tool like this. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you can start to feel different things inside the locks as you are picking them sometimes and realize what is and is not a set pin. So there you go. One more bit of a lesson for you. Again, we love teaching about this stuff. Some of you know this already. It's always down in the doobly-doo. Red Team Alliance, that's where we run our training classes. Not everyone can afford those. I dig it. That's why I drop content like this on you on the web. Uh, if you can, if you got that corporate dollar budget, man, come check us out. But for those of you who carry by on, uh, you know, just free stuff on the web, either videos or tools, uh, yeah, this is my personal leashy pick. Uh, I actually have both of them. I have both Schlegs. I have some quick sets. I have some others. Uh, hey, I stock them on Red Team Tools, right? But if you would like to win this, that's the giveaway this week. Uh, in fact, I'll even do you one better. When I contact the winner, I'm going to say, hey, check it out. Thank you for signing up. You signed up down in the What's It, which how you people get the free things. Uh, I will tell you which, you know, do you want? Do you want the five pin or the six pin? Uh, what's closer to you? What's more likely to be encountered by you? You let me know. And if you want the other version or any other keyways, well, you know, 
shell out the credit card. But in the meantime, one of you is taking one of these home for free because I love y'all. I love the comments. I love the feedback. I just love getting to connect with folks. I was literally at a bar today, which felt weird, right? Um, yeah, Tara was meeting some motorcycle folk and one of their husbands was there and he was there with his buddy. So like, Jim, Tyler, what's up, dudes? Yeah, this one, I was talking to this one guy about his uh, firearms patches and his buddy comes up with the beers and he looks at me. He sits down and he looks at me again. He's like, where do I know you from? Have you been around here before? Do you ride? I was like, no, no, I don't even have a motorcycle, but I'm on that internet. He's like, you're Deviant Olaf. You do that lock and gun stuff. And then like he starts telling his buddy about it. It was really cool. So that's that still is weird to me when that shit happens, but I dig it. I dig when people get uh, enriched out of this kind of content. So let me enrich you a little further. Somebody sign up, uh, win this. Otherwise, just, you know, keep on watching. I'll keep on making content for you, okay? Stay safe out there.